guys, this is Carrie, your Watercolor Misfit, and today is the start of a brand new series on this channel called You Ask For It, where I talk about simple, short, sweet little packages of nuggets of information about watercolor that you guys specifically asked me to talk about. So today's topic is all about color mixing, specifically greens, those natural greens that you see in stems and leaves and in nature in general. So the very first thing that you're going to need to do is take a lot of reference photos. Get out in nature, just get out there, take pictures of leaves, take pictures of stems, flowers, just you name it, anything that's green outdoors, go take a picture of it. Because as you start to basically gather those reference photos, you're going to be able to create a better and wider palette of greens from those photos. All right, so once you find an image that you really, really like, go ahead and view it on your computer or even better yet, open it up in Photoshop. In Photoshop, there is a tool called a color picker. It looks similar to an eyedropper and this tool will be able to get you three important colors. All right, so while you're viewing that image, go ahead and take that color dropper and go over a section that would be your darkest color green, which would be a shadow, and then get that color and set it aside, kind of like what I'm showing you here on the screen. And then you need to go ahead and take your mid-tones color, that medium color green, Take that and put it to the side and finally go ahead and get your highlights color. So what we're doing is pulling three green colors from that photo. Alright, so once you have those three colors, go ahead and pull out your handy dandy watercolor tool, that color mixing chart that I taught you guys how to create and make a couple weeks ago. You're gonna pull that out and then using that against your screen, you're gonna try and find those three colors, something in that chart that matches those three colors as close as possible. Once you think those three colors, you've kind of found them on your color chart, once you have those, go ahead and mix them on your plate or palette. All right, and so this is my trade secret for creating natural greens in my illustrations. And I almost hate telling you guys because it's kind of something that I learned through my process, but at the same time, I do want to share and be transparent with you guys. So here it goes. Basically, the strongest tool or the strongest strength in watercolor is glazing and layering. So before I even put those green colors on my illustration, I usually will play around with them on a scratch piece of paper. I want to see how they layer, how they mix with one another, and basically how they interact with one another on the paper, whether I'm layering them or just blending them together. So that is one thing that I play around with. There are certain colors when they mix together, they'll become muddy. And usually it's because either it could be because the paint is cheap or it could be because they're opaque colors. So I try and play around and figure out, do these colors actually mix well together? That's the first thing that I do. I play around with my layering on a scratched piece of paper as well as just sending, seeing how they blend together. All right, so the next thing that I do, and I'm sure that you guys have heard it if you've paid attention to any of my tutorials, I love to add colors 
in with my shadows especially. Those blues and purples and magentas look fantastic with greens. So I will usually play around with my shadows and midtones and see which of those colors look good with a purple or a blue or a magenta or all three. This way I'm creating an even broader spectrum of greens than just those three colors. So when I'm finished with this whole project, I have highlight color, I have a mid-tone color, I have a shadow color, and then I usually have a green-purple mixture or a green-blue mixture or a green-magenta mixture. And I will add those in in certain little areas where I just want to add some artistic flair. Usually they are in my deepest shadow areas. So that's a little tidbit for you on how to develop a palette of natural green colors for watercolor for those flower stems and just grass blades and anything in general that has those green leaves nature look. And that is it for this video. If you guys liked it, please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and all the other youtube -y stuff that you guys know so well. And if you would like me to answer one of your questions in the future, then make sure to use this hashtag. And that's the one that I'm going to be searching for for future videos for this series. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.